Hi, this is Norm Allen with you from the Out of the Norm Show. Today we're going to be looking at beautiful horses and the, the art and the sport and the discipline of dressage. We hope you'll enjoy the show. It's going to be at a beautiful Virginia horse farm. Folks are going to be prancing around. It's just a, just a magic time. And I know if you're a horse lover, you're going to really like this show. So don't go away. There's good stuff coming on the Out of the Norm Show where the story's all about you. It's the Out of the Norm Show, where the stories are all about you, with author, musician, radio and television personality, and all-around nice guy, your host, Norm Allen. Denise, this has been a very interesting day watching a lot of the competitions and things with the horses. Now, I'm a new guy at this. My granddaughter loves horses, and I love watching them. But to me, it's just horses going in a circle. But there's a lot more to it than that, isn't there? Yes, there is a lot more to it than that. We'd like to think that what we're trying to do is work in harmony and have a connection with the horses as we put them through the movements. Dressage is the art of training. And so there are many levels in dressage and many ho types of horses that can do dressage. And a schooling show is a great place to have the camaraderie of your friends, other horse enthusiasts that share your interests, and to ride in front of a judge so that they can help us monitor how we're doing on it. Um, the dressage tests are put as a compilation of a bunch of movements, and each individual movement is scored from 1 to 10. And so when I see circles, that I, that's really more than that, isn't it? Correct, it is. And the circles come in different sizes. Okay. So depending upon the size of the circle, you're looking for basically always the same thing. You're looking for, like I said, a harmony and a connection between horse and rider. Um, dressage is a progressive type of movement, a progressive type of riding. So as you continue up the levels, things get more difficult for the horse and for the rider. And as far as the athletic ability goes, as far as the timing on things go. And so what you see is in the lower levels, we're working on the basics that we're going to then fine tune as we move up the levels. Now, the, so the training is, who gets the most training, the horse or the rider? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they both get the training. Correct, yes. So is it a lot of study work? Is there a lot of things that you have to really learn as a rider? Uh, yes, there is. I mean, there is a memorization of the tests, um, but it's more about learning the feel and learning how to execute the movements in the best possible way for both. Dressage is about trying to make both people, both the person and the horse, better athletes through gymnastic movements. Does the horse get a, a sense of personality with the rider? I mean, you can have a great rider and a horse that doesn't fit and switch riders and the horse will be perfect. Is that kind of a scenario? It, it, that can happen. Yes, it can happen. You do have to have a good match of personalities. Um, it's easier to not have the best match of ability, but you have to have a good match of personality, I believe. So, so feeling is a whole lot of part of it. Isn't a it? very big part of it. Not just discipline. Correct. Correct. Discipline is a big part of it, too, though. It is a very intense sport because it is... It does have high requirements for both the horse and the rider. Now today is a school, a kind of a training show that we've seen today. But when you get into larger shows, there'll be hundreds of horses in those, won't there? Yes, yes. Yeah, upwards of, you know, seven, eight hundred. It depends on the size of the show. Um, but the, the schooling shows it is a more relaxed atmosphere. Uh, lots of times your judges will interact with your riders to help them through and learn more and act on what it is they're trying to learn. And as you go to what we call the license shows, there's more cost, there's more intensity, and a lot more horses. That's a little more expensive than golf. Well, I don't know about that. My <laughs> husband golfs, <laughs> so I don't know if it's more expensive, but yes, probably. If there's someone out that needs a little more information about uh, how to get involved with this or to learn more, how can we get them in touch with uh, the right people? What websites or what information can we give them? The, um, in the United States, we do have what's called the USDF, which is the United States Dressage Federation. They have a website, usdf.org, I believe, um, that has a ton of information on it. And um, you can always Google it. Like I said, the neat part about the sport to me is it is a very progressive sport. Everybody can do it. Every horse can do it. There is a level for everyone. There is a test for everyone. And, and it helps both become more athletic and more fit and more balanced, both rider and horse. 
Now, I've noticed today, and this is not to be politically incorrect or anything, but I've noticed it's mostly women who have been doing this today. Is this kind of a typical hobby for a lot of women in horse country here in Virginia? Um, probably pretty typical. This part of Virginia also has a lot of other disciplines. Um, but I think in general, having done horses for the majority of my 50 plus years, there are probably more women in our sport in all parts of horsemanship than there are men. I mean, there are some sports you do see more men, but they're usually more your roping, you know, your Western disciplines right. that involved cows. Um, but most of these disciplines, there are men, there, and there are some very good men. Some of the top riders in the world are men. Um, but there does seem to be a lot of women in it. We, we try partner. to think of it as a partner. That's a good line. Yeah. That's, that's what we are working for in this. Like I said, the harmony, the, the, harmony, the unity, the, um, the connection. Uh, we, we'd like to think of them as a partner. And I don't know. I I've know some men that are very, very good. So I don't know if it's a sensitivity thing as much as mm. we women just seem to be attracted to it well, in larger numbers. <laughs> now, if someone happens to be in the... Uh, Virginia area where we are. We're over on the east coast of Virginia, I guess you would call, right? We're not central. northern Virginia. No, but we're pretty close to, yeah, central northern Virginia. It's Fredericksburg, Virginia. It's for you can look on the map and find out. But if you're in the general area, this is a great place to plug into if you're interested in more information about dressage and also about just plain old horse riding, right? Uh, absolutely, yes. And like I said, we also, I am a part of a local chapter, a local dressage chapter, um, at VADAF, which stands for the Virginia Dressage Association in Fredericksburg. We also have a website. It's VADAF.org. And, um, and we have information on our website, always of upcoming events. There are many clinics. There are many shows in our area. Virginia is a great area for people who are interested in horses. We have a lot um, at our fingertips, you know, versus people in, in the Midwest that have to go hours and hours for instructors. We have a lot of very good professionals in our area. We have a lot of very good clinics um, that you can write in or audit. Anybody who is interested in just watching and learning more, um, there are many venues to go and find that. Um, and all of it is available, like I said, on the website, not just ours. But um, if they were to go to the U.S., the United States Dressage Federation one, there are ways to go through and connect and find events in an area. So no matter where you are in the country or even around the world, uh, if you're watching this program, you'll be able to find some more out information about dressage training and horseback riding and all the fun things, and you'll meet neat people like Denise. <laughs> Thank you. We so much appreciate you coming. Well, we're glad to be here, and we're certainly glad to visit with you and learn more about it. And we'll look forward to uh, look forward to some more riding in just a little while. We're also going to take a walk around the farm and just show you what kind of environment you get to live in when you have horses in Virginia. That and much more right here on the Out of the Norm Show, where the stories are all about you. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to the Out of the Norm Show. We're here at a beautiful dressage training school. I've never heard of it. I'm an old East Texas guy that used to ride horses around the cows and things, but this is a whole different game. Yes, uh-huh. Dressage basically is, is French for training, so it's, it's a series of, uh, of levels to, to, to develop the horse basically from A to Z, going on up the levels, from simple movements to just walk trot to uh, walk trot canter and, and, and higher level movements. As I was talking with uh, Denise a few minutes ago, we were talking about, I'm a novice at this. I, mm -hmm. see, I see beautiful animals and well-trained people and well-trained animals, but they're just going in circles to me. But it's a lot more than that, isn't it? It is, yes. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, starting at the lower levels, we're looking for the horse to, you know, be, be, have energy going around the ring. And when they ride a circle, that, you know, judging the shape of the circle and is the horse basically, you know, being obedient with, with, its, with its head and neck, not, not throwing its head around and that sort of thing. So the skill and the, the discipline is on both, the rider and the horse. It is, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely a communication. It's, it's definitely a joint effort. I was watching you judge uh, someone who'd been riding, and they did a couple of rounds, a couple of lessons. Mm -hmm. And then to, to watch you, you make comments at the end of them. What yes. kind of things do you look for as a judge? Um, overall, just looking for uh, the presentation of the horse and rider and, and how, how well they you know, execute the movements and how supple or limber the horse is and that sort of thing. Um, and then the comments at the end are sort of just a, kind of a brief overview of what they could improve on. Have you been doing this a long time? Uh, yes, I've been doing it about 20 years. Mm -hmm. So you've been riding much longer, though, huh? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, probably close, uh, yeah, pro uh, a little over 30 years. <laughs> we don't realize it, do That's we, right, after exactly. a while? <laughs> I haven't been asked 
recognize that in the world. Well, it's very interesting, and it's a great sport, and uh, I really enjoyed watching your work and listening to the comments and seeing you out there. It was, it was really neat. Uh, we don't see this down in Texas very much, but right. we, but here in Virginia, it's quite a, quite a show. Yes, it is, yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right. Hey, thanks for being with us. Hey, we're going to be right back after a quick break. Don't go away because the story's all about you on the Out of the Norm Show. Hi, welcome back. I'm with Charnette, and this is Lady. We've seen her ride in the ring out there, and that's been kind of exciting. Uh, how long have you been doing that? Oh, 40 years. Oh, you started yeah. out as a small as child. As a small child, I don't remember learning to ride. I just always remember riding. So. Are you a Virginia native? Yes, uh, Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania native, yes. So you've grown up around horses uh, mm -hmm. all your life? Yeah? Yep, it's in my family. Both sides of my family have horses. Now, what brought your interest to, dis to dressage? Ooh, a little thoroughbred, off-track thoroughbred I rode. I still have him. He's 23 years old. And um, I started taking dressage lessons to help me be able to control him better without all the equipment, just to be able to control him better with my body. And uh, and it, he got addicted to it, and I got addicted to it, and here we are. Here so, we are. yeah. And this this horse you have with you today, this is? This is a Floriata M. She is a German Oldenburg. She's turning seven next month, and I've had her since she was a four-year-old. Beautiful animal. Thank you. And, and rides so well. Just watching you in the ring was just beautiful. Now tell me a little bit about your organization that you're part of here. Um, I am co-president of the Virginia um, Dressage Association Fredericksburg chapter. Um, we're a chapter of, of course, the Virginia Dressage Association, which is part of Region 1 of the United States Dressage Federation. And um, we basically just help support the local dressage community and the surrounding areas, the surrounding counties. And um, just give people places, like lovely farms like this to come to, that they can come work on their tests for their shows and better prepare for license shows so and we have clinics we have uh, clinicians from all over the United States that come in and give clinics which are lessons on our horses so that we become better riders so that we're better partners for our, our other team member here so it's interesting you mentioned the word partner because Denise said the same thing I said it's it's like a tool of the of the sport and you said no it's a partner of the sport so can you be a mediocre rider and have a great horse and have a good ride um to an extent, you can have a much better ride if you're a better rider. Because horses are horses, no matter where they come from, what their background is, their breeding. Their, yeah, you can get better scores on a better moving horse. But if you're not a good rider, you're not going to get the scores that your horse potential could. So. so the discipline and training for riding is just as important as the discipline and training for the horse. Absolutely. Absolutely. What age group do you like to teach? I don't teach. I'm an adult amateur. So, <laughs> so I get taught. <laughs> So. You're still learning after 40 years of doing this. Absolutely. You learn all your life. You, it's always something new to learn. So, We love horses, don't we? Yes, we do. I, they're, in, they're in my blood, so I have no choice. As there are a lot of people here in Virginia. Hey, we're going to take a walk and look around at the farm. I think we ought to go see the ducks over there. Don't you think that would be yeah, a good place she, to go? Yeah, I saw those earlier the first time she saw one. That was interesting. But... <laughs> well, we're going to go and take a look at the farm and uh, just see what life is like around a, a beautiful place here in uh, central Virginia. We'll be right back after more. Well, actually, we'll be right back after this break on the Out of the Norm show where the stories are all about you. We'll see you shortly. Hey, I'm visiting with Glenda Wilson, who's this beautiful farm that we've been seeing with all the horses and the dressage lessons and all of those wonderful things are right here. But this farm is a lot more than just that. What brought you to a place like this? Well, as many of the riders here that you've seen today, I have had it in my blood to have the horses and have a facility. It's sort of a childhood dream that's come true for me. Were you raised on a farm or raised around animals? No, I wasn't. And that was always my childhood dream. Yep. And uh, finally, after a few years of marriage and um, the right location, we were able to make that come true. So city girl goes to the country. Pretty much. <laughs> yep. And I never looked back. Now, what was this farm originally? This, um, years ago, was um, mostly grown crops, and it was a family farm. Uh, very nice family, still in the area. They come by occasionally and see the farm. We keep in touch, and so there's a lot of history here. The original house was built back in 1907. Yep, it's, it goes back a few years. A lot of personality here, isn't it? There's a lot of stories, yes, and it's a, it's a beautiful story. It, it, it's, it's very touching. So what is your typical day here? I mean, you keep some horses on the farm and, and other things. You probably have a really busy day all the time, don't you? Well, uh, it's taking care of the animals. Yep, that's, that's really my main, main focus in life. I get up in the morning, and the first thing that I think about is getting out and taking care of the, 
the uh, horses mostly, you know, because they're the big animals and you got to make sure that they're taken care of. And then I have, of course, dogs and cats and I have a few ducks that have become pretty close to me. <laughs> kind of like my mother duck here. Um, but I've, I've held off with that. I, that seems to be a pretty good good uh, selection of animals for me to take care of at this point. How many events in a year do you have here, such as we've been to today? I, I always have two, a, a spring show and a fall show. And then I also, during the year, um, host clinics here as well, which brings in trainers, local trainers, sometimes not local, but mostly local trainers. And we get together and um, have clinics with the riders, that, some of the riders you've seen today. Would it be exclusively dressage training in, in, in that, or do you do, do other kinds of riding? Pretty much, just uh, dressage training. Um, I have had some dressage trainers sort of expand beyond just dressage riders because dressage is such a, a, a wonderful f fundamental uh, schooling for any animal. Um, so many times there are horses that ride different disciplines that still get a lot out of dressage. So you get a lot of satisfaction watching these people progress and get better as they come and all of that? Huh? Yes, it's, it really is a wonderful thing to be part of. Well, it's a beautiful place to be a part of. There's a lot of peace around here. Thank you, Norm. I appreciate you coming out today. It's been a lot of fun. Well, it's good to be here. You know, we're going to be right back in just a few minutes, but we're going to take a look around the farm and go down and see the ducks that we were talking about and maybe walk through the barns. Who knows what you're going to find out. You'll see all kinds of good things right here in, in central Virginia. We'll be right back after a quick break on the Out of the Norm show where the stories are all about you. Like loving the South and me just loving you You can't go far from things that are so dear and true Like loving the South and me 